Hello, Maria. Hi, Rima. Good, Good to see you too. Hello, Melbourne. Uh, this is uh, Vilnius University, and uh, this is one of our most famous courtyards. I teach here, and as you see, there's a graduation ceremony going on, and uh, the students are happy. And uh, Maria is showing you some of the beautiful Baroque buildings, uh, the Baroque facades of St. John's Church, the University Bell Tower, Alma Mater Vilensis, uh, and uh, we have the Dean over here, Amindo Gaspietkauskas. And uh, this university has had many, many uh, famous graduates. Uh, Adam Mickiewicz, the great Polish romantic poet, studied here. Uh, Czesław Miłosz, the great uh, modernist Polish poet, studied here. Uh, his friend, uh, belonging to the next generation, Tomasz Wenclawa, also studied here. Um, and then after that, there were many Lithuanian poets, Judyta Vajcunaite, Marcelius Martinaitis, Justinus Marcinkiewicz. Uh, lots of uh, great poets uh, studied at this university. And we have several plaques in, in a different courtyard honoring some of them. And uh, it's a beautiful place to be. Uh, so let's take a walk. Uh, my usual walk from the university is to go out this way. We'll have to meander through the crowd. And uh, we'll stop by the UNESCO House of Literature. Uh, to see uh, if anybody's there, because usually there's some poets hanging out there. <clears throat> this was uh, actually unplanned, uh, in, in the sense I didn't know uh, there would be a graduation ceremony right now. Um, but you see all these beautiful, happy people, so uh, it gives uh, a nice impression of business. <laughs> Some noise too. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, we're we're heading out of the university now onto St. John's Street. Over there um, is Castle Street, El One of our graduates of Vilnius University. It was a little bit noisy inside there, so I was thinking I'd read it here. We'll find a quieter spot. This is by Thomas Venslova. It's in my translation. It's untitled. Beyond St. Anne and the Bernardines, where the liturgical calendar is marked by a family of bells, the monastery is held within sand and hills and all that is green. Under high windows, ripples of rills wander through steep gaps of hills. Roof tiles stretch harmonious lines, and a street light shines double in pavement and sky. On this side of three crosses, the city fits into one's palm, and a Doric column answers cold frost with lucid calm. I am full of weightless time. The sidewalks are unhoned, white plains laid out like books scattered slant and oblique, where strings of streets break and paint strips down to stone. Not yet destroyed by wars, unchanged by passing years, the stone wall stretches under tin into an unlocked labyrinth, a realm of rough inscription. In the market's dense disorder, we drink a draught of wine, and thanks to it, the endless wine of your unfamiliar neighbor becomes a speech more dear. The linden leaf is fated to fall, the grass to grow, the jay to fly, death to wander down the street, and you to recall the stanzas why, relishing the richness of vowels and speech. Twilight falls, a kind of innocence, donning the mask of loneliness. Venslava uh, is still alive. He lives in Vilnius, 
after spending a long time at Yale University. Uh, and uh, now we're going to go to uh, a new institution of the Lithuanian poetry and literary scene. Uh, because Lithuania was granted the status of UNESCO uh, City of Literature, uh, Ruta and Maria opened up these offices. So we're going to uh, take a look, see who's around. Because there's lots of events here, and people come here to do work. Uh, there's book club meetings, poetry readings, discussions with authors, and uh, it's generally a very happening place. I see, uh, looks like Ruta has a meeting, so we'll, we won't go in the office there. We'll check who's, who's out back here. Is anyone here? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Secret behind it. I hear somebody working. Uh, hey. It's uh, the poet hey. Matas Borokas, poet and translator. Uh, what are you working on? Uh, on a set, a big novel translated from English to Lithuanian. And the guitar. Ah, from English to Lithuanian. And the guitar. Ah, okay. To paradise. Ah, okay. Way to go. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so. si since you're here, maybe you want to read a short poem of yours? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, always ready to read a short see. poem. It's always. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, your book is here. Let's see. This is one of my favorite. I translated the, uh, his work into English. Okay, since I'm here, I'm, I'm part of my English, but okay, <clears throat> I can. Uh, books are my pets and garden, my shelter and clinic. Clutching their sentences, I gaze at the greenery on the other side. The bars of the lines are dense. I husk the pills of poems, smooth like stones by the black sea. But no, I also want, I crave to be one of those, riding in armored hexameter, harnessed to a chariot, gripping the reins and the spear, Shouting, flying like mad, into the stony backs of the gods. Thank you. Uh, that's from uh, his book Now I Understand, published by Parthian in uh, the UK. I hope. Yeah. I think so. I think yes, 2018. Uh, well, let's uh, continue the the literary tour, the, as short it is as it is. Uh, thank you, Mario. Uh, good luck with your work. Bye bye. Bye. Marius' wife is also a poet. Yurikite uh, Yasponite. I've translated some of her work as well. Uh, and the two of them are having a reading uh, today in the Signataru uh, Namaiva, the, the, the building that I told you about where the Constitution was signed. So there's a, there's a lot going on here. It's a busy time. Things will settle down in the summer, in July and August. But for now, everything is still hot with activity. So usually, uh, you know, I leave the university. I might drop by UNESCO. Sometimes I go to a reading after uh, my seminar. Sometimes I stop to see what friends might be hanging out. Oh, we have construction. We going have noise on. again. Construction Sorry. and renovation seems to be uh, a constant in Vilnius these days. And uh, my usual path then is up uh, Yonu Street, John Street. We are passing uh, the Polish Embassy. And uh, I often go to a cafe bookstore that I really enjoy that's going to be just up the street. Uh, we are on the way, passing. Let's uh, show them uh, the Zavatsky Publishing House. Uh, this is the place where Adam Mickiewicz's first book of ballads and romances was published uh, in the early 19th century. multilingual 
city. It's uh, got a multilingual literary history. So Adam Mickiewicz, Czesław Miłosz are two of Poland's greatest poets, and they're both from Vilnius, in the Vilnius area, let's say. Uh, the former territory of the Duchy of Lithuania, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Uh, we also have a rich history of Yiddish literature. Uh, so, for instance, Abraham Sutzkever, uh, arguably the greatest Yiddish poet of all time, is from Vilnius. Uh, he lived here and he survived the war here. If we look up the street here, um, we are looking... That street curves up to a part of the ghetto uh, during World War II. A lot of the Jews were imprisoned up the street there. Uh, Abraham Sutzkever was among them. And uh, he escaped through uh, tunnels under the ghetto and uh, was caught in the forest. Uh, the Nazis, there were some German soldiers and some Lithuanian collaborators. The German soldiers told the Lithuanians to kill him. And somehow or other, they recognized who he was and his uh, cultural value. Uh, and they shot their guns into the air. And then they went back and told the German officers they killed him. He was able to then escape, find some partisans, and eventually made his way to Israel, uh, where he ended his long life. So that's uh, one of the more positive stories from a really horrible time period. Uh, another famous uh, survivor of the Lithuania ghetto was the painter Samuel Bach, who is still alive in Boston today. We have a museum in his honor. Uh, he's a wonderful, surrealist kind of painter, but also a son of Vilnius. We are now um, approaching uh, the Dominicans church. Uh, it's another example of uh, Lithuanian late Baroque architecture. Uh, Joseph Brodsky actually came here uh, and uh, prayed and writes about that in his poem, Lithuanian Nocturne. Uh, Joseph Brodsky liked to come here. He became good friends with Thomas Venslova, whose poem I read earlier. <laughs> we are now here at Mint Vinitu bookstore and cafe. This is in some ways a home away from home for me. It's a very cozy cafe and plenty uh, of books. And uh, let's take a look and see what it's like inside today. This is Rugile. She's uh, one of our baristas. She studies French literature at Vilnius University. Say hello to Melbourne, Australia. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see, uh, did you notice if uh, anyone came by? No. Oh, should I maybe? No. No? No. No? Okay. Well, uh, let's take a look at the bookshelf. And uh, what do we have here? Well, we have, among other things, my translations of Maidonis the Lithuanian Romantic classic from the late 19th, early 20th century. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe I'll read something from there. Let's, uh, let's maybe go outside, get a nice view of down the street. It's a bit windy, but it maybe... It's a bit windy, but I love this view, looking at the old wall and the old buildings down here. So let me, uh, let me see if I can read something. Um, from here. I'll read you one of his most famous poems called Trakai Castle. These are in my translation, published by the Maironis uh, Museum. With moss and mold overgrown, in Trakai a worthy castle stands, while its lords sleep soundly in stone. The castle looks over the land, but as the years run by, the walls now groan. They dwindle each day, neglected, alone. When wind comes troubling the water, and the lake tries to climb onto shore, the waves wash up to the tower, and it crumbles like never before. So the walls fall apart day by day, filling our hearts with dismay. Our glorious keep is this really your fate? 
When heroes came forth through your gates, you saw the might of Vitotas the Great as he rode under history's weight. So where is your strength, your inheritance? Where are the days once dear gone hence? These silent walls, neglected by all, are now without guard and weaponry. How can we those dear times recall as they march down the road to eternity? O oh, dearest times, will they ever return? Or will we, as for youth, merely yearn? When I took the road through Thrakai, my heart cried out in sharp pain. A tear washed my cheek on the sly, and my eyes couldn't take the strain. I felt my hopes for solace flee. Dark night was all that I could see. And that poem is, is uh, certainly evoking Lithuanian history as an attempt to uh, give uh, the Lithuanian nation strength and identity uh, in the face of uh, occupation under the Russian Empire. And uh, Maironis was very important for keeping alive that sense of Lithuanianness, uh, even when the Lithuanian language uh, in its written form was banned by the Tsar. So uh, it's, it's a kind of anti-colonial poem, a kind of resistance poem, and uh, that tradition continued into the 20th century with, with poets writing about Lithuanian history and mythology and architecture as a way of resisting uh, the Soviet Union and its ideologies. Uh, now in the 21st century, the poetry scene is much more wide and free, and uh, people are doing all kinds of different things and uh, writing all kinds of poems. And many of them uh, like to come here to Mint Vinatu uh, and to uh, have a cup of coffee and uh, say hello to their friends. Uh, so let's, uh, I guess, uh, finish our little tour uh, back in Mint Vinatu. Uh, maybe there's something else I can read for you. How are we doing on time? Um, it looks like we're running almost out of time. <clears throat> Um, but let's see, I see, what do we have here? These are the new books. This is the Vilnius Review. Uh, it's our journal of uh, contemporary Lithuanian literature. I do a lot of translations for it. Uh, the editor used to be Maris Borokas, who read you a poem earlier. It's now uh, a, a younger writer named Soldas Vasilyauskas. Uh, he's taken over the reins after many years of good work for Modus. Uh, most of the content, in the, the, all the content, I'm sorry, is online uh, at VilniusReview.com, I believe it is. And uh, the, the journal is published in a paperback form once a year as a kind of best of uh, Lithuanian literature from the internet website. The website also has wonderful videos of poets reading their poems in different locations, often in Vilnius. And the very nice design of this issue, yes, uh, it this, won uh, an award. This <laughs> won a design award recently, I forget what it's called, I'm not it's a... It's some a international award. Expert. Yes. But, yeah. So, so, so we're, uh, in that sense, uh, it's doing well. Um, we used to publish No More Amber, the Review of Baltic Literature. Uh, but that has uh, proven to be difficult to continue. Oh, hello, Oshra. Hello, hi. <laughs> hello. Oshra is uh, another leading poet uh, from uh, a younger generation, we can say. Can we still call you younger? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh my God. Okay, Maria? Yes, <laughs> sorry. I almost um, fell. <laughs> and uh, Oshra just uh, came by. You had an interview, yes, with somebody? Yes. <laughs> So it's, it's a busy day for all of us. Everyone's trying to get work done. But maybe you could uh, read something. Oh, yeah, us. sure. This I is, would be happy to. This is uh, Osha's book, The Moon is a Pill, also published by Partheon, uh, just like Modus's book. Same publisher in Britain. And uh, I'm also the translator. Uh, so uh, what would you like to read for us? I don't know. Maybe some short poem? Yeah, Could a short work? poem. A short poem. I think we're at our time limit. We so. have a, a minute. Yeah. Holy. Pedestrian smiles of all spring, books, films, shoes in the wrong spot, sex, Monday sirens, a pigeon flies into church. None of it appears to mean anything. And that's the only reason. 
et a tears. Okay, thank you, Oshara. Uh, Thanks so it's much. a wonderful <laughs> book, and uh, the title poem, The Moon is a Pill, is really intense and uh, quite a bit longer. And uh, so I recommend it. Um, we have a thriving scene here, and uh, thank you, Melbourne, for listening. Um, I'd love to see you in person someday, here or there. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.